Hello and welcome to the course on optical spectroscopy and microscopy. Uh, in the previous lectures, we were um, discussing extensively about the objective lenses and what are all the uh, aberrations that can um, happen in these objective lenses and uh, how do we um, understand these aberrations and uh, um, the corrections uh, that are incorporated for this objective lenses. Um, so, um, we were uh, talking about chromatic aberrations so far, which is aberrations that are um, arising because of uh, we trying to um, <coughs> see through the objective uh, multiple colors at the same time. Okay. Um, here the um, uh, in this lecture, what we will focus on are the aberrations that are uh, present irrespective of the color. We can also call them as monochromatic aberrations because they are in um, the extent of the aberration or the presence or absence of it does not depend on the color, but is uh, the uh, is the nature of the lens itself is going to produce that. <coughs> now, what are the um, kind of aberrations here that we are going to be focusing on? Um, we will be talking about <coughs> spherical aberrations astigmatism coma and curvature. Along with this, we will also be talking about two other um, um, kind of aberrations called as a pin cushion. and barrel aberrations. Now, these uh, by themselves are, in, uh, are not necessarily a separate class, they are though um, talked in um, various different uh, lectures and the courses as uh, uh, it is a uh, different aspect though the fundamentally they are a combination of some of the uh, um, other um, some of the other uh, nearby, um, ab I mean, some, some of the other fundamental aberrations, and uh, you can express these or you can understand this in terms of that. So, in that aspect, optically they are not very, um, they are not a separate class. However, uh, in the during the manifestation in their images and stuff, they um, uh, come in way, way, way too often. So, it is good to uh, talk about them and uh, understand where they originate from. Okay. So, let us start with spherical aberrations. Um, <coughs> the one of the fundamental assumptions about we writing down the expression for the focal length is that um, the light incident on the different uh, 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 different parts of the lens all behave exactly the same, there is not much of a difference. However, that you will see um, possess, possesses a very strong contradiction to start with itself. Um, the contradiction goes uh, pretty much like this, if you have to assume a point source or um, then the and it is uh, close by, then the angle that an incident ray Sub, uh, substance towards the periphery is very different from 
and in around the central optical axis. So, since the incident angle is going to be different, the extent of the refractions produced by this lens right, will be had ought to be different. Now, when we wrote down those previous expressions, where there we make an important assumption that this angle, angle that we are talking about or the diff um, is very, very small, the angle subtended is very small, so small and the objects that we are talking about are so infinitesimally small objects. Um, we really do not worry about the, there is no extent that we are talking about here. So, we are not talking about an object that is like this. So, where we have uh, rays originating from different uh, <coughs> parts of the object meeting uh, the lens at uh, um, in different um, angles. Uh, even uh, with uh, in here, we are uh, going to we we, we will um, we would have restricted ourselves to a very very small am, uh, angle. It's um, we call that as a Gaussian approximation because uh, Gauss uh, actually developed this whole optics. So we are looking at Gaussian. We were looking at Gaussian optics. The moment we go away and uh, I mean go, go to a real system go away from the Gaussian optics you immediately realize that um, the extent of um, the um, refractions are very different ok. So, <coughs> what is going to happen is that um, the light uh, will take uh, um, the light that are um, the light rays that are coming closer to the focus are um, so the um, that are closer to the central optical axis uh, focus at a different place compared to that of the light uh, rays originating from um, the periphery. Okay. So, this gives rise to um, light uh, rays coming. So, we will um, continue here. So, um, the light rays coming originating from the periphery, all right. So, we can draw that here. So, they uh, what I am going to do is I am going to use different colors uh, to represent the color does not here mean the um, wavelength, um, but the different colored lines they represent the spatial segregation, right. So, so they um, they focus longer while these originating from the periphery focus closer to the lens. So, what you can see here is that the focus is spread over a larger um, a, 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 um, a series of planes um, in, um, in the z along all along the axial dimension resulting in an extended um, shape of the object uh, with a characteristic um, a feature uh, we, uh, that we call it as spherical aberration. Now, as you can see um, this uh, <coughs> Uh, this is because of the fact that the, the refraction of the peripheral rays are very different from that of the axial rays. One way are the peripheral rays being uh, more refracted than the axial rays and uh, naturally the biconvex lens um, uh, is more prone to such kind of uh, uh, aberrations. One way to actually um, avoid that is um, to employ what we uh, call is a combination of a biconvex and a plano concave. In here, it's really important to have a plano concave or a plano convex lens itself. This, um, to a greater extent, um, puts 
I mean takes care of these um, uh, differences in the focus and uh, s such combinations right combination of uh, using a biconvex lens and that um, plano concave or a plano convex lens um, um, is one way of uh, correcting the spherical aberration. And of course, we can always uh, restrict the aperture, but then um, that uh, comes at the cost of not being able to efficiently focus the light and also be able to uh, not being able to correct collect the um, um, light uh, more efficiently. So, this in this system you would expect the um, all the light I mean all the rays to be converging in a space much more closer in the along the um, propagation axis than that is present in the biconvex lens. So, um, what uh, in an objective lens you will see is that wherever they had to use a positive menis menin meniscus uh, they would compensate by using uh, in one side um, plano concave lens to or um, uh, to accommodate for this uh, spherical aberrations. And so, the again as you can see that uh, the number of elements um, that uh, starts to uh, that keeps uh, um, adding up as we start to correct for each and every one of these aberrations. Uh, clearly, this is a vital ab aberration that we need to correct for uh, to get the best possible focus. Any um, um, if the, the effect of su such aberration is that the our localization accuracy is now compromised because the light photons uh, can be anywhere between this point to this time this um, region. So, um, you would uh, not be able to uh, so that the minimum focus is somewhere in between. So, the optimal post focus would appear as if it is somewhere in between, but it is much larger than I mean in the lat, uh, lateral dimension than what it could have achieved without a spherical aberration. Now, next in line of this operations is our um, astigmatism. Um, astig Now, this uh, is a result of when we actually look at uh, the lens um, through. So, this is as a result of differential radius of curvature um, the lens is possessing in um, uh, or a orientation dependent um, radius of curvature that the lens is proce uh, processing. So, to define it let us uh, take two axes. So, now the two mutually perpendicular axes. So, let us call this as um, law I mean just call this as transverse and let us call this as sagittal axis. So, you have the surf um, the radius of curvature of the lens is not uniform uh, are not symmetrical along this theta direction right. When you go from um, when you go from here to here along the theta you would expect that the radius of curvature should be uniform. Now, for some reason if there is a difference in the radius of curvature due, due to manufacturing defects the radius of curvature along the transverse axis is different from that of the sagittal axis. What you will expect is that the um, light that is uh, originating uh, that is getting focused by the. So, let us uh, draw it out I am going to flip the lens now. So, okay. so I am going to draw two planes. Okay. So, a plane um, green along the what I call it as a sagittal axis and another plane uh, 
Okay. So, the green um, is the sagittal plane or So, we will it is along this axis. Now, if you take a uh, or maybe it is better not shaded. If you take a light ray that is originating from here along this and if they were to come in focus at a point um, f s in the sagittal plane while the light originating light rays originating from the um, <coughs> ten transverse plane. So, of the same object all right, um, where to come to focus at a different point. Okay. So, now what we could do is that we could actually um, try to highlight this regions. So, I will try to see if I can do it So, that is the sagittal plane focus. Now, because it is a plane, now the point no is no longer a point here, but it is going to look like a line in the since the uh, uh, sagittal plane is a horizontal plane in the horizontal plane. It will be a small line in the horizontal plane. Okay. So, let us uh, mark out this region. This is a uh, It is a transverse plane focus. So, the there will be a line that the point will become a line along the sagittal plane, while the point will become a line along the transverse plane too, but at a different distance, different plane. Okay. So, sorry. Mm. Okay. So, now as a result what um, what we would see is that when we uh, um, the object is actually um, will look extended or distorted in one of its dimensions. Depending on which of the focal length is larger you might look uh, it might look as if it is uh, stretched in uh, its um, height or stretched. Um, in its uh, lateral dimension because the focal length is different. So, the magnification is different and on top of it you will also see that the round I mean a circular point becoming long um, uh, elongated um, in addition to that. Then the, the, the extent of elongation will also be different that gives giving rise to the thin and um, I mean thin and long versus the um, Fat um, and com fat, fat and short uh, um, images. So now um, uh, this had to be uh, corrected by the um, really um, polishing the surfaces of the lens and uh, taking, I mean, taking care of the uniformity of the lens by itself. All right. So essentially, this. Um, uh, this has to do with the um, proper manufacturing of the lens itself. So, um, 
so, and uh, V sending the beam along the optical axis um, to a, a greater extent. Now, um, the third um, kind of uh, aberrations that we would focus on is um, coma or coma. So, this uh, oops, this originates because of um, the peripheral rays in a lens uh, coming to um, peripheral rays uh, <coughs> coming to focus at a different uh, at an uh, at a different distance in the focal plane than that of the um, central uh, uh, central beam that is um, if you were to take a lens now well, let us uh, take three rays. So, we have an op, uh, optic uh, array that is going through the optical center. Now, um, if the rays originating from the periphery were to converge at a different place along this axis. Okay. So, let us take a ray that is coming here and it were if it were to converge at there is a symmetrical axis on here. So, now if it were to converge at this point while the this is closer the central axis is closer to this while now you can see that the there is a difference in the um, uh, there is a lateral shift in the focal points of the rays originating from the periphery. So, let me color it again with the different highlights. Um, these are the rays originating from the periphery, right, compared to the blue. So, what you see is that. Um, this green or the peripheral rays are focusing further than that of the um, uh, rays traveling closer to the optical center. As a result, when you look at the image uh, right about here, you would see a strong pretty um, sharp and a crisp image that is um, let us say uh, of a dot will be a um, circle, but as we uh, as we have um, as we go further and because the object have a finite uh, size uh, and then there are many rays around this. So, as we draw out different uh, rays you would see that each one of them would come and form an image about the optical center at slightly different um, with a slightly different uh, uh, centers ending up with the final um, green structure which is quite big because the focal length is larger. So, <coughs> it is it will be very diffu uh, also diffuse. So, giving rise to this characteristic um, comma kind of an um, as a like a um, extension um, so the circle becoming a very extended one sided um, oval or a comma and we call that as um, aberration co uh, coma um, aberration. Basically, there is a variation in magnification um, with respect to the aperture. So, there are two ways to correct it. One is to not have these rays coming at an angle. So, they are 
uh, passing through they do pass through the lenses at a, um, along the center one. Number two is to um, uh, reduce the aperture of the lens so that uh, you do not have this uh, ability to come at uh, uh, various different angles and there is no difference in the uh, magnification because of the um, extended aperture because the, the peripheral rays have a different focal length compared to that of the, um, the central rays. Now, these, um, these uh, effects do take care of uh, um, the aberrations that we have listed. Now, um, apart from this what we have is uh, two other quantities I talked about which is pin cushion and a barrel. Oh sorry sir before, um, before this uh, we need to talk about one more aberration sorry. It's, um, it is this is due to um, it is called as a curvature field curvature um, <coughs> so One of the important assumptions that we made is that when we are having an extended object which is not a, a point object then um, while um, then the image the points in um, the several points in this object would come to focus on a plane in an, and forming um, at the focal plane forming a nice little extended object. But um, if you actually uh, trace out the ray diagram you will realize that the focal plane uh, the, the planarity is not guaranteed particularly when you have very very high um, radius of curvatures um, the lenses with a high radius of curvature the plane instead of appearing straight or I mean appearing um, <coughs> as a um, appearing perpendicular to the horizontal axis and then the optical axis uniform and the uniform uh, it starts to acquire an curvature the, the imaging plane itself uh, is more like this which is essentially the different parts of this object comes to focus at the, the arrow starts to appear. I mean if it is if it were to be um, exactly so I think we need to invert the image so let us see wait the arrow starts to appear with a curve. Um, curve in it. So, this is um, because of the fact that uh, if you think of a pen a bunch of rays that are coming in um, from the periphery they would focus somewhere around here while this and so on describing a, cur um, a curved surface all right. So, now that um, <coughs> gives rise to the play uh, the field being non planar no, field here is the the focal plane being non planar. This is a very vital um, aberration which we need to take care of um, especially if you think about we having to scan the um, laser beam in a laser scanning system what we are actually doing is we are taking um, a parallel beam of light and scanning it across the lens surface at some point or the other. So, um, uh, the um, important assumption there is that when, when it is getting scanned the, the focal points do um, um, travel as a uh, travel in a plane not as in a um, uh, circle <coughs> or not uh, trans 
not uh, form a surface of a sphere. So, in such a case then um, uh, what we will see is that um, the sample that we are imaging will, um, will not be a, a cube that we will image, but instead it is a bent um, structure and then it gives likes to uh, several different uh, optical um, aberrations. So, to avoid that what we uh, do is we use lenses that are collect, corrected for this non planarity. Again the correction is very simple what we do is that um, you use um, a combination of the um, um, a combination of um, plano uh, I mean biconvex and the plano concave lens and um, that uh, pretty much uh, ensures planarity and uh, you see these corrections these are very vital corrections these corrections are um, taking place at several points and you would see that in an eyepiece of a objective these are called planar eyepieces and also um, in the objectives too. Now, it is this planarity correction that we see happening or mentioned in our objective list. If you go back in our objective list on the table that we do yeah, that we do here. So, this plan here right we are talking about this plan here and uh, these are represent they, that they these objectives were corrected for um, forming the focus in a plane not in a curved surface all right. So, So, that is uh, that is about the uh, field curvature and then how we correct for it and related to the field curvature and uh, the spherical aberration is uh, or are these two um, other observation um, aberrations often talked about which is pin cushion wherein if you place in a um, plane grid of uh, squares in the image what you will see is that the central squares are uh, um, correct, but while as we go move away um, they become uh, more curved ok. So, so you would see um, something uh, something similar to this. So, while the um, B is oh sorry this is barrel uh, aberration barrel aberration the picture that I have drawn is actually barrel aberration while the pin cushion is about um, Um, uh, as a grid that you have we have placed that is a square grid planar grid would transform into one of this. So, this is called a spin cushion and so if you see any of this then the uh, this happening in your uh, microscope then the immediate thing that you need to look out for is either the field curvature is not um, uh, maintained properly or uh, it is uh, usually it is a mixture of both the spherical aberration along with the, um, the, the field the flatness of the field not being uh, maintained that gives rise to these aberrations. Now, that um, concludes our extensive um, discussion about the objective lens and uh, what we have done so far is in bits and pieces uh, discussed different uh, parts of the microscope and what are all the features that we that they bring in and what we need to pay attention to. What we will do uh, is that in the 
uh, next class is that we would um, put together um, this all of this into an optical system for uh, you, uh, uh, and uh, I will actually present you a picture of how it looks in a very simple optical system when you put all of them together uh, how does an optical schematic look like and we will just briefly go through that before actually going and uh, seeing in detail how we can use such an optic uh, microscope body to in an in a confocal microscope and uh, how we, um, and um, some of the image forming aspects of confocal microscope we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you. See you in the next lecture.